Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and today I will be discussing the wirehead problem in the context of machine intelligence. The term wireheads refers to agents who have short-circuited their reward systems in order to gain access to pleasurable sensations without performing useful tasks. Drug addicts are one example of agents who have turned themselves into wireheads. Instead of eating, having sex, and other rewarding activities, these agents stimulate their pleasure centers directly, typically using chemical compounds that mimic the neurotransmitters which are involved in reinforcement learning or pain killing. Another example illustrates the origin of the term wirehead. Here, rodents have their brains connected up to remote electrodes and then have their pleasure centers repeatedly stimulated when they perform some specified action. Here, a rat deliberately pleasures itself by pressing a metal bar. Successful self-stimulation is indicated by the flashing light. Here, a rat is kept in a Skinner box. The rat's self-stimulation continues for extended periods, displacing its normal interests in food, water, and sex. One question that arises in the context of constructing machine intelligence is, how can we prevent mechanical wireheads from arising? The first relevant observation is that wireheads are fairly widespread. In addition to human drug addicts, other systems are vulnerable to similar types of corruption. Money is intended to motivate people towards action society regards as productive, but it motivates some people to perform bank robberies and other people to engage in counterfeiting activities, actions that go straight for the reward, bypassing the behaviours which society intended money to produce. Other things besides money can be forged. Products, reputations, qualifications, citizenship and identity are other common targets for forgers. In each case, something desirable is obtained while bypassing the normal means of its production. On the other hand, the frequency of wirehead behavior is typically kept relatively low. Wireheads are usually in a minority due to the use of anti-wirehead strategies. A wirehead doesn't necessarily sit there doing nothing in a state of sublime ecstasy. Its pleasurable state may still require effort to maintain. Consider heroin addicts. They are short-circuiting their pleasure centers, but they still need to find cash to fund their habit, and the result can be crime and violence. Looking at the anti-wirehead strategies used, police surveillance is one of the main approaches. It seems reasonable to expect surveillance to become ubiquitous in the transparent society of the future, and that might be bad news for prospective wireheads. Interest in the wirehead problem often centers around the issue of whether superintelligences can be defended against these kinds of problems once they can self-improve themselves. By assumption, the superintelligences under discussion have complete access to their inner workings and the power to change them as they wish. If superintelligences tend to use their intelligence to find ways of stimulating their pleasure centers directly, it seems likely that this would compromise their reliability and limit their usefulness. To defend against wireheading, a superintelligence needs two main architectural elements. It must evaluate the desirability of the expected consequences of changes to its goal system with respect to its current goals, and its goal should accurately represent the state the agent is supposed to produce. It is the second condition that leads to the main problems. Say you build a superintelligence with the goal of cooling down the planet. If you give it access to a range of thermometers and tell it to minimize their temperature readings, a superintelligence may notice that it can best attain its goals by immersing the thermometers in liquid nitrogen. How can you tell the superintelligence that it's actually the temperature that needs minimizing and not some proxy for it? This turns out to be a non-trivial problem. You need to give the superintelligence a sophisticated understanding of its goal, including things like what the concept of temperature means and how it is measured. The wirehead problem can be illustrated even in relatively simple systems. Say you want a superintelligence to find as many prime numbers as possible. Here, the utility function might reference a counter representing the number of prime numbers which have been identified so far. However, a wirehead might notice that it could increment the counter without even attempting to test the candidate numbers for prim primality. How can you tell a self-modifying superintelligent agent to actually, actually maximize the number of prime numbers found and not simply poke values into a counter? Some solutions to this problem do not appear to be very promising. Attempting to limit self-modification by walling off the agent's utility function seems destined to fail. This is getting in between a superintelligent agent and its utility, which is really a good idea. Similarly, making the agent feel revulsion when it thinks about modifying its goal system is another unlikely solution. That just creates motivation for the agent to hire a third party to perform such modifications. 
The key to the problem is widely thought to be making the agent in such a way that it doesn't want to modify its goals, and so has a stable goal structure which it actively defends. This resolution was pioneered and promoted by Eliezer Yipkowski. Here he is, describing the basic idea. If I could modify my own source code, I wouldn't knowingly modify myself to want to kill people, because people might die as a result of that, and my current self doesn't want people to die. Gandhi does not want to commit murder and does not want to modify himself to commit murder. That's a, a rather informal argument, if you like, that a self-improving mind can have stable motivational architecture. Another researcher who has investigated self-improving systems in depth is Steve Omohundro. He seems to have arrived at a position similar to Eliza. Here is Steve describing the situation. The system does not want to change its utility function. Because remember, once it's rational, the utility function is the thing that's telling it whether to take an action or not. And consider the action of changing your utility function. Your, the future version of you, if you change your utility function, will then pursue a different set of goals than your current goals. So from your current perspective, that's terrible. So like uh, kind of uh, an example might be, let's say you're thinking about should you try smoking crack for the first time. Um, you can envision the version of yourself as a crack addict who might be in total bliss from its perspective, but from your current perspective, you know, that might be a terrible life. And so you might decide that, no, 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 that's not a good path to go in. Unfortunately, the problem of how to avoid wirehead behavior is one where we have relatively little experimental evidence which bears directly on the issue. Also, the wirehead problem is an extremely complicated one, and it is difficult to think clearly about all the issues, and so there is the possibility of making mistakes when reasoning about the topic. There is not yet any rigorous proof that real systems will actually act as though they have stable goals once they become capable of self-modification. Here is Eliza on that topic. Gandhi doesn't want to kill people, so if you offer Gandhi a pill that makes him want to kill people, Gandhi will refuse the pill because he knows that if he takes the pill, he'll want to kill people, and then they'll die, and the current Gandhi doesn't want those people killed. That's probably how goals are preserved in a self-improving system. And I wish I could prove this, but the current math for decision theory doesn't work well for describing self-modifying AIs. The current math goes into an infinite loop when you try to describe the AI modifying the part of itself that does the modifying. So this is one of the open research problems that needs solving before anyone can build a friendly AI, and this is in fact what I see as my research objective. The real intelligent systems which we can see exhibit varying levels of resistance to wireheading. Some people refuse to take pleasure-inducing drugs, while others become addicts all too easily. Most people work honestly for a living, but there are some who rob banks. Most corporations perform a service to their stockholders, but some engage in accounting fraud to elevate their stock price and then use insider trading techniques to siphon off their money. While humans normally appear to have stable goal systems, there is the phenomenon of religious conversion to consider, in which people's goal systems often appear to undergo dramatic changes. Of course, humans are handicapped by being evolved agents. Agents which are deliberately engineered to be resistant to the temptation to wirehead themselves may perform a lot better than humans do. It seems likely that some approaches to constructing machine intelligence will be especially prone to the wirehead problem. So, although there appears to be a theoretical solution, getting agents to the point where they have sufficient understanding of their own goals to know enough to avoid self-modifications that trash them looks likely to prove to be a non-trivial pro problem. One proposed architecture for synthetic intelligence involves a neural network surrounded by sensor and motor signals with positive and negative critical feedback. This type of architecture, which happens to be the only one for which we have a practical proof that it works, along with other strategies based directly on reinforcement learning, seems especially likely to be vulnerable to the wirehead problem. Lastly, a few words on the significance of the problem. The details of this problem and its resolution make a difference to futurists and the architects of intelligent machines. I rate the problem as one of the most important and interesting philosophical issues in machine intelligence. If 1% of the people who talk about machine consciousness consider the problem, then we might have a better understanding of it today. Enjoy.